Witch Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at the Phenom 2 Quad Core, the 840. It was just released yesterday, and uh, I previously had reviewed a whole bunch of quad cores from AMD. This one here comes with no level 3 cache. However, it is low wattage, only 95 watts, comes at 3.2 gigahertz, which is pretty good. And it uses the same 45 nanometer technology compatible with your AM2 Plus board. Here is my test system in Windows 7 64 bit. As you can see, I'm using an older Asus board, traditional 4 gigs of uh, DDR3 memory here, and a GTX 460 to mix it up a little bit so you guys can see how it performs together with that GPU. So, basically, when we run this at default settings, because this is not the type of CPU that you want to overclock, okay, necessarily. It's meant to run at low power. It's meant to run at 3.2 gigahertz. It doesn't have level 3 cache, so you can't expect the same performance as the higher end uh, quad cores. This is more like an entry level um, processor that gives you pretty good temperatures, as you can see on full load, only 45 degrees Celsius there at full load, 3.2 gigahertz. On idle, it's about 30 degrees Celsius, and that's terrific results on this machine because I'm not using a very fancy CPU cooler. Stock cooler will give you terrific results because this is only a 95 watt CPU. Now, when it comes to overclocking, should you decide to do that, you can get a couple hundred more megahertz out of it. I bumped it up to 3.5 gigahertz when I increased the voltage, but you really don't see that much of a gain in performance just by increasing it from 3.2 to 3.5. I left all the memory settings and everything the same. So not much to talk about when it comes to overclocking. Okay, if you want to do it, you can do it, but I really don't recommend it. Just leave it at 3.2 gigahertz and you're fine. For everyday use, this does just fine. Okay, you don't need to worry. When it comes to benchmarks, 3D Mark Vantage, here you can see the CPU score of 10,700. And when you compare that against other CPUs that I've reviewed, other Phenom 2s that I've reviewed in the past, you can see here how it fits in between those other CPUs. So that gives you a good idea on the performance when it comes to CPU scores. Okay, because we're not testing the uh, graphics card today. This is just the CPU that we're looking at. Again, game CPU operations per second. I, it gives you a good idea on where this fits compared to other types of CPUs. Okay, And if you're doing rendering, video rendering, here you can see the score that I basically got in my test system using that GTX. We're using just the CPU rendering here and there's the score, a little bit less as you can see than the Intel Core i7s, obviously which are much more expensive. By the way, this CPU um, does very well considering that it's only a hundred dollars. Okay, hundred bucks US roughly gives you a quad core CPU. So not bad at all considering what you're getting and uh, it's a Phenom 2. Okay, Crisis Warhead you can see here you can play some decent gaming. You're gonna get good results with a video card like this as well so you can mix and match. You can put an AMD or an ATI or an Nvidia card. Doesn't matter. You get good results on gaming as well so if you want a well-rounded CPU that doesn't cost too much, you're doing a little bit of everything on it, casual gaming, well, this is a really good uh, deal if you ask me for about $100. So um, definitely recommend this if you're looking for an entry-level quad-core and you're not really looking at an Athlon, you're looking at a Phenom. Now, um, again, low temperatures, pretty good performance for what you're getting. Can't really say more than that. Definitely not for overclocking though. So I'd like to thank AMD for providing it, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.